Hey guys, I hope this video finds you well. We're going to be learning about integers today. Um, to start off with, what we might actually look at is just a quick definition of what is an integer. Could you answer that question for me? Hopefully you might say that an integer is a positive, a positive or a negative. Now this is the, uh, the clinch word here. Whole number. Okay, whole number, but also it includes zero. So basically, an integer is a number that has direction. It has is it either a positive number or it's a negative number, or it also could be zero. But it needs to be a whole number. Now, in some places, they might refer integers as directed numbers. Okay, so you might be in a place, particularly in London, I know when I taught there, they certainly use directed numbers as the word instead of integers. It means the same thing. It just means number with directions, positive negatives, including zero. Okay, but obviously they have to be whole numbers. Now, as a matter of fact, you guys have been using integers for quite a long time. For example, you've done questions such as 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. Okay, very, very straightforward. So, you have been using integers, so what's this lesson going to teach you? Well, you might have some more complicated questions. For example, and we'll come back to these, you might have 5 plus negative 7. You might have 5 minus positive 7. You might have 5 subtract negative 7. And all of a sudden you have these two numbers, but there's a bit more information. It's no longer having positive 5 and adding positive 7 to make positive 12, because that's a matter of fact, that's exactly what you have done previously, you're now adding negative numbers, or you might be subtracting positive numbers. So what's going to happen in those sort of instances? That's what we're learning about today. So in order to teach you about that, I'm going to show you a very poor diagram. I'm going to draw a little hot air balloon. I'm certain you can probably draw a better one than I can. Now, in my hot air balloon, let's imagine where, you know, this is the, uh, or it's in um, the sky, okay? It kind of looks like the water at the moment, doesn't it? But it's in the sky, okay? And I'm going to put some balloons on my little hot air balloon. So we're dangling in the air. Now, obviously, if you just had hot air balloons like this and it would be pulling it upwards, um, we need to have something that's going to sort of, I guess, go the other direction. That's going to hold my hot air balloon steady. So I've got three balloons in the sky, so I'm going to put three weights to hold it down. So we're, I guess, having a bit of equilibrium or equal sort of uh, stage there. Now, for my balloons, now what direction would the balloons take you? They would take you up. So I'm going to call these balloons my positive balloons. Because if I put some more balloons on there, obviously my hot air balloon is going to rise in the, in the sky. Likewise, my little weights are holding me down, so I'm going to call them negatives. So I'm going to look at a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to look at what happens if I add another balloon. Or in other words, I add a positive. So if I add another balloon here, what do you think is going to happen to my basket? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Well, hopefully you've said if I add another air balloon, it's going to pull me in an upwards direction. Okay. So in other words, that means if I add a positive, I'm going to have a result of a positive. So what happens then if I add a negative? So in other words, it what I'm saying is I'm going to add some more weights. What's going to happen with my hot air balloon? Well, hopefully you recognize the more weights I put on it, I'm going to be going down. Hopefully I'm over land and not over sea. So if I add a negative, the result is going to be a negative number. Okay, so they're the first two things I'm going to look at. Now, instead of adding numbers or adding balloons and weights, what happens if I subtract or take away a balloon. In other words, I take away a positive. Well, if I get my rubber out here and I take away a hot air balloon there, and then I might take another balloon away here, what is going to happen to my basket? Well, with one balloon and three weights, it's probably going to come tumbling, crashing down. So what I mean by that is if I take off my balloons, take off an, an addition, then we're going to still have a subtraction as my result, because obviously the balloon was going to be going downwards. 
Oh, let's put my balloons back there so I'm not going to plummet to my unfortunate demise. Let's see what happens then if I take away, not a balloon, but I take away one of the weights. Well, if I take away some of the weights there, I'm going to take away a weight there, I'm going to take away a weight there, and you know what? I'm in a good mood. I'm even going to take a weight away from there. So I'm taking away all my negatives. What's going to happen to my balloon? Well, with no weights holding me down, we're going to be going sky high. Okay, which means that if I'm going to take away a negative, we're actually going to have a positive reaction. My hot air basket balloon is going to be going up into the sky. Now, that might sound really strange to you and you might not have got that at all, so my apologies for you having to endure that. However, when we're dealing with integers, such as when we came back to, uh, I think it was these questions here, whenever you have two pluses, directly next to each other. Now, look, these might, I guess, if I look at my pluses here, they might have a bracket in between, but when I say directly next to each other, I mean there's no number in between them. If I have two positives, this results, or I should replace it with just one single positive. If I have two negatives, like the bottom one here, then we also replace it with a positive. We just saw that um, up in my question previously, okay, two negatives make a positive. And we also noticed that when I added a negative, okay, so remember I added on a weight, we had a negative reaction. Or if I took away a positive or took away a balloon, we still had a negative. So what I need you guys to do and I said, don't really worry too much about my balloons and weights. I need you to remember this. When you have two positives or two negatives next to each other, we replace it with a positive. When you have a positive and negative next to each other, we replace them with a negative. Now, I do have a little rule to help me remember that. Um, this one particularly, okay, I often say mixed means minus. So for example, these first two questions, five plus negative seven, I have mixed signs. So I'm gonna replace them with a negative. Five minus plus seven, I'm gonna replace them with a negative. And if the signs are the same, then it's always gonna be positive. I don't really have a rule for that, I guess, but the same sign will make a positive, which means for the bottom one, five minus minus seven, well, I can replace that with a plus seven. And now they become pretty easy questions. Five take away seven, well that's negative two. Five take away seven, well that's negative two. And five plus seven is gonna be positive 12. All right, so that is basically my addition and subtraction of some integers. So how about I write some questions out. I'm gonna ask you to have a quick crack and see if you can do these. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to pause, have a quick go at these four questions, and see what you can come up with your answers. Okay, welcome back. Now, hopefully this is what I'd like to see. A positive and a negative, mixed means minus. Five minus three equals two. Two negatives with both the same sign, so they are a positive. So three plus four equals seven. So each time, I'm simply replacing the two signs with one. The two signs with one. That's what I want you to do each time. 15 plus plus seven, that's just 15 plus seven, which is 22. And the last one, three minus plus four, or mixed means minus, so three minus four equals negative one. Guys, that is integers. I hope that made some sort of sense to you. Again, don't worry too much about the balloons and weights, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of understanding about why we have those symbols that, that occur. So just to cap it off, when you have either two positives or you have two negatives, then we always rewrite them with a positive symbol. If you have a negative and positive or a positive and negative directly next to each other, then the result is going to be a negative number. The only last thing I'm gonna say is, if you had a question like this, minus four, minus three, just quickly, are the two negatives directly next to each other? And the answer would be no.
okay? They are not next to each other, therefore we do not replace them with a positive. This would simply be negative seven because think of your number line, if I'm at negative four and I'm taking three away from it, I'm going this way, one, two, three, which would be where negative seven is going to be. If I had four minus negative three, then absolutely you could say that makes four plus three is seven. Absolutely. But see how in the first instance here, the signs are not next to each other. When the second example here, I'll give two asterisks there, they certainly are. Well, there are no numbers in between the two signs. Okay, so again, I hope that made sense. Please give me some feedback. Let me know if, uh, if you are still misunderstanding things and I'll try to make things a bit easier for you. Have a fantastic afternoon.